Yeah, so this is our next session, which is on probability distribution. Okay, I want to know what it means and the concepts, okay, in relation to probability distribution. So we first want to look at some terminologies, okay, in relation to probability distribution. Then we'll move on to the random variables and then look at the various kinds of distributions in proper. Now, the first thing we need to understand is what an experiment is. If we are talking about probability, probability means what? Chance, okay? Possibility, likelihood. Now, if something is likely to happen, then it means that there are a number of possibilities, okay? But that happened. For example, we roll a, a die, a Ludo die. When you roll it, that it's possible you can have one, two, three, four, five, or six. Okay, so there are six possibilities, but only one of those possibilities will be observed. Okay, good. Now the process of rolling the die is an experiment. Mm -hmm. So anytime we conduct an experiment, we expect to see some possible outcomes of that experiment. Now, when you watch the referees doing a football match, especially when they're about to start a game, okay, you see the two captains, then the referee throws the coins, the coin, eh? and then whoever chooses the head will decide on where the game should start, okay? So at the point he's conducting that experiment, eh? there's a possibility that team A will be doing the selection or team B will do the selection, depending on where they chose, okay? So every experiment comes out with what? A set of an outcome, okay? Now, in our context of study, those possible set of outcomes are referred to as the sample space, okay? So, for example, in the in the toss of the coin, the sample space will be what a head and a tail. Okay, so if you you, are, you toss one coin, then the possible outcomes will be what head. Uh, so let me say the sample space will be equal to what. Then we use the set notation that will be a head, comma a tail. Okay. If I toss two coins at the same time, let me say I throw two coins at the same time, okay? Then anytime they, they land, there will be two coins. You understand? Uh -huh. So the sample space in that experiment will be what? It's going to be what? A head and a tail or a head and a head or, sorry, a head and a head, or a tail and a head, or a tail and a tail, okay? So this means that the first coin, you have two CD coins. Eh? The first coin will come up with the coat of arms, which is the head. And then the, the second coin will also come up with the back. That will be a tail. Or you can have both coins having the coat of arms. Or you can have the first coin having the back and then the second coin having the coat of arms. Or both of them having the back, okay? These are the possible outcomes of such an experiment. Good. Now, if it's in weather forecast, we can have, so today might be a sunny day a cloudy day or a rainy day. So there are three possibilities. So we can have what? The possibilities of our sample space, which is what? A sunny day, a rainy day, or a cloudy day. You understand? Good. So the set of all possible outcomes is what we refer to as what? Our sample space. Good. Now, at times, instead of using the S for the sample space, we use the notation omega. 
So this is called omega, okay? So omega. Okay, so when you see omega, it's the same as what your capital S, which is a sample space. Now, let's move on. So, so we've looked at what a sample space is. We also want to look at another definition and that is an element or a member, okay? Now, the, the, the elements in the sample space, which is, for example, in the role of a die, one, we say one is an element of the sample space, or it's a member of the sample space, or, I mean, it's a sample point, okay? So they all belong to the set S, you understand? Yeah. So we call them elements. Now, in the case of two coins too, don't forget two coins, you always have two coins dropping at a time, okay? So this is one member, not two. Uh, in the experiment, when you toss two coins, you have two coins landing at a time. So it's just one outcome, but one outcome of two coins, okay? Because you threw two, two coins, good. So, you know, there are four outcomes in this experiment. It is one, two, three, and four. Okay, good. So these are the sample points or the members or the elements in this sample spaces. Good, now let's proceed. The next thing we are looking at is an event. When we say an event, then we are looking at a particular set of outcomes, okay, in an experiment, usually of interest to us. So let's say that we tossed a coin. We know that the possible outcomes from tossing, or let's say we roll a die, let's roll a die. If we roll a die, then our sample space will be what? will be the sets one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. Now let's say I'm interested in only e even numbers. So my events, the event E, okay, is defined as what? A set of even numbers. Okay, so if I define the event, then it means that the set of E will be these numbers, which you see here, okay? So E is equal to what? Two, four, and six, right? They are the only even numbers in our set X. Eh? These are the even numbers in the set. So that gives us our events. Another example will be the event of observing at least one head in the toss of two coins. Now, if you recall, we said if we toss two coins, the sample space will be what? The sample space will be what? The first one could be head followed by a head, head followed by a tail, Tail followed by a head. Sorry, tail followed by a head. Or uh, tail followed by another tail. Okay, so these are the possibilities. So if we are looking at at least one head, at least one head, okay, means a minimum of one head. So there is one head here. There is one head here, and there is one head. There is even two heads over here. So if you want the event of at least one head, then the event will be what? E is equals to, so that event will be E equals to what? Head, 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 tail, or tail, head. 
Good. Now, the next point I want to make is um, what we refer to as a probability. Okay, now that we've understood these terminologies, we want to also define the probability itself. Now we say that the probability of an event, okay, is denoted as P of E, eh, denoted here. So the probability of the event E. So if the event is A, then it will be P of A. Do you understand? It, it, it doesn't always have to be E. If the event is B, then it is P of B. Okay, take note of that. And the probability of the event is defined, okay, as the number of outcomes in the event over the number of outcomes in the sample space, okay? So number of outcomes in the event over the number of outcomes in the sample space. And of course, we can also define it empirically, okay? as the frequency of a particular outcome or event over the total frequency of all events. Okay. Now, having known this formula, let me just write it in shorthand rotation. So in shorthand rotation, that will be P of E is equal to, so when you see N of, event E over N of what? Sorry, small N of what? The total outcome, so we can say of omega, okay? Or of S, mm -hmm. so, so that will be the shorthand uh, uh, definition of what we've just seen above. Okay, so let's see how we are going to make use of this formulas. Okay, so as I was saying, if we have three points, okay, and we toss them all three at the same time, uh, each coin has two possibilities, which is head or tail, okay? So if we toss the coins, we want to see all possible arrangements. So what we are saying is the first coin could have been a head or a tail, okay? Then the second coin would also have been a head. If the first was a head, the second would have been a head or a tail. And if the first was a tail, the second could have also been a head or a tail. Okay. Now, if the second was a head, the third could have been a head or a tail. Mm -hmm. They don't depend on each other. You understand? Then if second, the third could equally have been a head or a tail. Now, if it was the first was a tail and the second was a head, third could also be head or a tail. And if the second was a tail, the third could have been a head or a tail. So that helps us to uh, get our sample space, okay? So our sample space is going to be what? S is equal to what? The set of, now you pick them lane by lane. So head, head, head. Eh? There are three coins which will come down at the same time. So head, head, head. Then we have head, head, tail. Head, head, tail. Then the next one will be head, tail, head. So let, let me use a marker so that you can follow through with me. I'll use a different color. So we've done the first one here. This head, 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 tail, okay? Now we are on head, tail, head. And then the next one will be head, tail, tail, okay? Good. So we are, just a moment. So we have head, tail, head, and then what? Head, 
till till okay good so we've covered the path okay for these sample points now let's go to the next one the next one will be tail head head tail head tail so let's write it tail head head and then tail head and tail then the final one will be tail tail head and what tail 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 so this is the sample space okay this is a sample space for tossing three coins at a the time these are all the possible outcomes now let's say i'm interested in the events let me define the event so my events say event e is um uh, observing what or an yeah at least at least what one tail okay good and we want to find so events e is at least one tail find we have to find the probability okay probability of observing okay of observing what uh, e which is at least one tail in the toss in the toss of free fair dice okay good so first like we said we have defined our so in our solution let, let's write it so in our solution okay in our solution sample space has been clearly defined here let me select this so your sample space is defined you've already defined it then the next thing is we have to look for the members in what in your events okay so events is going to be what the set of so we have the set of what um the event is defined as well at least one tail at least one tail eh? meaning if you don't get at all you should get one tail so let's go and count here there is no tail here okay so we mark it it's not part of our event mm -hmm. this is not part of our event because there's no tail they are all heads there is a tail here one tail there is a tail here there is a tail here there is one tail here there's one tail here that sorry that two tails two tails two tails so they all have tails okay so you realize that our sample or oh, sorry the event okay will consist of elements which are what which are which are head head tail let me change my color head head tail head tail head head tail 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 head head tail head head oh i've i've already written that so we have tail head tail 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 head <clears throat> and then finally tail 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 and we close the brackets. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. So now the duty is for us to uh, uh, apply or employ the formula for probability. So we know that the probability of E an event is equal to what? The number of the outcomes in the event or the number of members in the event over the number of outcomes in our sample space okay 
So that is going to be equal to, now how many outcomes do we have in the effects? Look at it, we have what? We have, let's count them. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Whilst in the sample space, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, good. So our tax is almost done. So we go and write number of outcomes in the E is seven over eight. Okay, and that gives us the probability for observing at least one tail. Okay, in the toss of three points good any question the first thing we are supposed to know is the probability of any event okay always lie between zero and one inclusive in other words this is what we are saying okay we are saying that um zero is always less than or equal to the probability of an event is less than or equal to one okay now let me include the inclusiveness here this is always less than or equal to less than or equal to this is what we mean so any probability is is either it doesn't happen if it doesn't happen that's zero and if it is sure to happen, that is one, okay? But if we are not certain, then we are in between zero and one. That is what we mean. Good. Now let's move on to the next rule. The uh, complementary of an event, okay? But before we do that, let me also touch on a second, a follow-up rule to what we just talked of. Now, another thing we have to understand is when we sum all the possible events, okay, in the sample space, we should always get one. So in terms of formula, that will be sum of, okay, the probabilities of all events, eh, or probabilities of all the events, let's say, in the sample space. So let me use the sample space. We are going to get one is equal to one, okay? So this is what we are trying to demonstrate. Eh? When you take, for example, in the toss or in the roll of a die, the possibilities are one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? So which means that their probabilities are one over six, 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 one over six. One over six. Eh? When you add one over six plus one over six, it's two over six, plus another one over six, three over six, plus another four over six, plus another five over six, plus the sixth one, six over six. Six over six is equal to what? One, okay? So when we add all events in a sample space, you get a total probability of what? One, okay. Now let's, um, So for complementary of an event A, it just means not A. In other words, when there are two possibilities like rainfall and sunshine, uh, if it is not raining today, then it will be what? Sunny. That is if there are only two possible outcomes within the sample space. Okay, good. So we, we represent that by this formula. We say the probability of A is equal to the probability of not A. Eh? Good. 
Now, let's try and understand this better. Let's say that we have the weather forecast. So our sample space will be a sunny day or a rainy day, okay? So because we have S and R, uh, let me use omega, okay? So omega, the notation for omega for the sample space. Now, when we look at the two events, uh, the probability of a sunny day is equal to what? Will be equal to one out of what? Two. And the probability of a rainy day will also be equal to what? One over what? Over two. So what we are saying is, the probability of a sunny day, okay, is just equal to what? One minus the probability of what? A rainy day. So it's one minus the probability of a rainy day. And this is because, you see, starting from the previous rule, which we just looked at, we know that there are only two possibilities. It's either it's going to what? It's going to be a sunny day or it's going to be what? Rainy day. So for sure, if it is not sunny day, it will be rainy day. And that one is the probability of our sample space, which we know is, is equal to what? One. We saw that the probability of the sample space is what? One. Okay. Good. So a simple change of subjects will lead us to the complementary rule. So if this moves to the right hand, then it becomes the formula we have here. I hope you understand. Good. So what we are saying in very in the very I mean summary of everything is if we have a and some other outcomes okay then the probability of a is equal to 1 minus those outcomes that are not in a okay in other words a complements which is usually written as a complement like this are members which are not part of a okay so if you want the probability of a complement eh, those who are not in a then it will be what one minus the probability of what a okay that is the complementary rule good now let's let's move on Okay, now the addition rule simply says that when you want the probability of, let's say, two events, A or B, eh, then it is written as A or B is written as, look at it carefully, A or, eh, and in the concept of probability or in sets, or represents what? represents union okay whereas and represents what intersection try and remember that so a or b is the same as p of a or b that is union b okay and the formula for that is p of a plus p of b minus p of a intersection b okay that you should recall from the lower level, right? You remember we, you, you used the uh, Venn diagrams to demonstrate this. Uh, good. In Venn diagram form, you had something like this. And then you had another one to like that, right? Okay. So we have the two sets. Let's say set A, okay, set A, and then you have set B, okay, set B, right? Or let's say the number of the set A, number of set B, right? And from there, you come up with 
a formula like this in sets you have the number of p a or b a union b is equal to what the number of elements in set a plus the number of elements in set b so that will be n of set b minus what n of what sets a intersection sorry so intersection what b okay yeah then from there when we divide all of these terms hmm, you divide all of them by the probability of the sample space okay if you divide them all by p of s or n of s which is the sample space you will get a probability so that's n of the sample space you divide both sides by n of s okay this n of s this is n of s right that gives us this formula we are seeing here which is what probability of a union b is equal to probability of a plus the probability of b minus the probability of a intersection b good having said that there are certain events which okay are mutually exclusive what do i mean by that let's say we have a box here full of i'm going to use colors so let's have the first one is a black ball another black ball then we have a red ball and a red ball and then another red ball here okay now the, the formula we have rating if i ask you to find uh, just a moment if i ask you to find the probability of let's say events just a minute so probability of a red or a black ball okay the formula will say what it's equals to what the probability of a red ball plus the probability of a black ball minus the probability of what a red and black ball now let's put in the values to solve it then you understand what we mean by mutual exclusiveness now what will be the probability of a red ball let's come here the probability of a red ball like we we said p of red will be what the probability sorry sorry that will be will be the number of red balls okay over the number of balls in the box which is a sample space okay and the number of red balls here is what number of red balls is three sample space is what six so three over six the number of black ball or sorry probability of black ball will be the number of black balls so over there is five. number in the sample space yes sample space is five thank you over the numbers in the sample space which is five so in this case we have n of b over n of s okay which will be what two over what two over five okay good now the question is do we have any ball here which is red and 
and black at the same time. Is there any ball that is red and black? And the answer is no, okay? There is no ball that is red and black. Mm? So when we talk about mutual exclusivity, then we are saying that an event which cannot happen at the same time, okay? Two events which cannot occur at the same time. You can't observe a ball that is red and black in this box. It's not possible. So which means that the probability of that kind of events, the chance of R and B, those two mutually exclusive events, will always be equal to what? Zero. Okay, so that brings us to the second rule here. So the second rule says that if there are mutually exclusive events, okay, in that experiment, then this third term here will always go to zero. So the formula becomes what? P of A union B is equals to P of A plus P of B. Okay, so let's complete the solution, what we're solving for. So if we wanted our P of R in your B, it is just the P of R, which is what? Three over five plus what? Plus we have two over two over five, eh? which is equal to what? Which is equal to five over what? Five over five. And that is one. Uh, that is one. <laughs> one means we are very sure that it will happen. One is surety. So if I don't pick a red ball, I will pick a what? A black ball. And you're asking me to find a probability of picking a red or a blue ball, a black ball. So if I put my hands in the box, eh, whatever comes out, it will either be a red or a blue. And so it's for sure. That is why your probability is one. There are only two possible outcomes. It's either going to be what? Red, or it's going to be what? Black. And in that case, when you sum them up, you always get what? One. I hope you understand. Good. Now, let me move on to the next formula and we we'll see. Conditional probability. Give me a minute. We we'll talk about something conditioned or a conditional statement. Okay, we use clauses like if, uh, given that he comes, given that he gives you this book, uh, if he comes. Okay, uh -huh. those are conditional statements. Now, the same way in probability concepts, we can have something happening before another thing, okay? So for example, if I have an event like, um, just a moment. So let's say that there are two events that have happened, okay? Like selecting a ball from there basket okay and then the first thing that happened let's say we have red 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 so let's do it more practical then we have black black okay yeah now if we have a black let's say the first event will be e1 if the first event happens to be what? Happens to be black, okay? Then the question is, what will be the probability of the second event? Okay, the second event. Mm? What will be the probability of the second event? Mm? If it is what? If it is, let's say, red or probably black. So we have a first event that has happened and we are looking at the second event given 
So we write such a statement as the second event, okay, that's E2, given that E1 has taken place, okay? So this is the second event, mm, given that, so given that, or if, given that E1 or the first event has taken place, okay? Has taken place. Has taken place. Then we write the probability of this, okay, as the conditional probability. So we say that the conditional probability of two, that is E2, given E1 has occurred. Mm? In other words, if E1 didn't take place, then the second event will also not take place, right? So first came before the second. You understand? And the second in this context will depend on the first event that took place. Now somebody will ask, how will it depend on the first event? If I ask you for the probabilities, eh, ideally as they are standing now, look at the box carefully. The probability of E1, the probability of the E1, okay, which is a black ball, is what? Two over what? Two over five. And the probability of what? A red ball is what? Is what? Three over five. Okay, but when we are talking about conditional probability, look at it carefully. When I took the first ball out of the box, okay, after I took the first ball, which is a black ball, we were left with how many balls in the box? It will be left with only what? Four in the box. So if the red ball is coming second. Then in terms of conditional probability, P, the first event will still be two over five. Okay, the probability of the first black ball we took will be two over five. But the probability of the second ball we are taking, because we did not replace it, we did, we did not replace the first ball, there are only four in the box. So your sample space is now four, not five. So the second event will now be three over five. You see, so you realize that this probability here is not just P of E2, it is P of E2, uh, given that a E1 took place before it was being selected. Hmm? So this is the conditional probability. Uh, I think uh, I didn't bring the four. I, I still made it five. This is four, not five. Okay. So that that is the conditional probability. So the conditional probability is what? Three over four. Okay. So clearly you see the difference here. Hmm? When the first event takes place before the second event and it was not replaced, then there is a difference, okay? So it is not just probability of E2, but it is probability of E2, given that we have already selected E1 without replacing it. And they are different. Ha. So anytime we talk about conditional probability, this is what we mean, okay? So let's go back to our slide and then take the definition. Given two events A, okay, and B, and then known that B has already taken place, B has taken place before A is coming, then we write the probability of A given B. This is a conditional probability, yeah? the probability of A, given that B has occurred, 
is equal to the probability of A and B over the probability of what? B. Okay, that is the formula here. So it's equal to the probability of A and B over the probability of B. Okay, now look at the formula well. And then let's go back to the board and see if this is really true. Okay, good. The formula, like we saw, let, let's let's clean this section. So the formula says P of the second event, which is A, okay, in this case, E2, given B, which in this case is E1. You see, E1 took place before E2. It's given us, so the formula there you saw was P of, eh, that is A and B, so that would be E2, intersection what e1 okay all over let, let's create a border here over what the probability of the first event which is e1 that is what the formula says okay now let's see how true this formula is mm? and then um, no, before, before we even test it, okay, we need to look at one condition. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll be looking at one condition before we come here. So there's another example which we'll use to prove it, right? So let's hold on for now. Because we need to look at this aspect and what we call as independence. Okay. So we say that two events are independent okay independent when what the second event does not depend on the first event okay but if the second depends on the first then it is dependent okay if the second doesn't depend on the first then they are what independent mm -hmm. good now let's take an example if two people write examination okay and then we are told that let's say ama and kofi wrote the exam there are two people and we said find the probability that kofi will pass his examination given that ama passed her examination now clearly in in the exams hall nobody depends on the other okay good in conditions where there is no copying, uh, Amma's performance and Kofi's performance are different. They don't depend on each other. So in, in, in other words, when you say find the probability of Amma's performance give, or Kofi's performance, Kofi will pass, given that Amma passed the exams. It's just the probability of Amma passing the exams and Kofi also passing the exams, okay? So it becomes a simple multiplication. Mm -hmm. So in other words, this A giving B becomes what P of A, okay? And then if we have probability of B giving A, it also becomes P of B. Good. Then it leads us to this very important formula, I'm aware you have another claim. So here, what we are saying is first, okay, per this rule, if I do a change of subject, this will be P of, um, why, let me type it. I think I'll prefer to type. So let's have, let's have P probability of what? event one, giving, 
uh, uh, I don't know where they put it on this laptop. I think it should be, yes, that's it. So giving, no, oh, that will be event two, giving event one, okay, will be equal to what? P of uh, E2, E2 intersection E1, okay, over P of what? E1. So what I'm saying is if we multiply both sides by, let's, for the meantime, let's clean this side. Okay, so if we multiply both sides of the equation with what? P of P of E1, okay? And then the right hand also by P of E1. Then, of course, this denominator cancels out this, right? So we end up getting the formula which is P of E1 times P of what? E1, no, E2 given E1. Okay, is equal to what? P of E2 and P of what? And what? E1, okay? Now, this is so because the denominator on the right hand has now gone to the left hand, right? Good. And then what we are saying here is if E2 does not depend on, does not, or is independent, if E2 is independent of what? E1, okay, then what are we saying? Then the probability of what? E2, okay, given E1 is simply what? The probability of E2. Means it doesn't depend on E1. Okay, good. Now, this will happen in the case where we replace the ball. So if you take the first ball out, and then you replace it. You see, the second one will not depend on the first one because the number of balls will still be five. You understand? Uh -huh. So that is a typical scenario of independence. Okay. So if that is the case, then you see it will also affect this formula here. If we are saying that, this one is now equal to P of E2. Then the formula now becomes simply what? It now becomes what? It becomes P of E1 times P of what? E2, okay, is equal to what? P of E2 and and what P, and uh, e1 okay so in other words this simply means that if i want the probability of a red ball and a black ball eh, it is just going to be the probability of a red ball times the probability of a black ball you understand <laughs> So that is in the case where the ball has been replaced, okay? So if I want two balls, the first ball and the second ball, then <coughs> this is the formula I will use to find it. I'll just have to multiply the two probabilities, okay? So in the first case, we had a probability of E1. E1 was two over five. 
okay? And then in the case where it was replaced, it was three over five. So if I wanted my probability of the first, sorry, So if I wanted the probability of the second and the first, okay, ball, which is red and black, is just going to be this times this. So that will be what? P of E2 was three over five. And then P of E1 is what? Is two over five. So that probability will be what? Six over what 25 that is what the rule is saying so in the case of independence if you want the probability of a and b and they are a and b are independent then you just find their respective probabilities and multiply them together okay so i i'll bring the class to a conclusion at this point if you have any questions you can ask then next week we come, we'll take it off from there. Now, for those who are in class,